So all week long, I've been thinking about this woman. How do you pronounce her name? Sarah Jong? Yeah, Sarah Jong, yeah. I've been thinking about her because I've been thinking she kind of hits on something about the left that has always bothers me is that they never think about where things are coming from. They only think about what they want. You know, they never think about where where anything has come from or why it exists or why things fail and why things succeed. And it's kind of like, you know, when I made this speech to uh, Yaf uh, last week, I kind of shocked some of the young people there because nobody's allowed to talk about the roles of men and women. Nobody's allowed to talk about what it's like to be in a marriage and what kind of marriage works. And I do because I just figure I'm so old by the time they run me down, I'll be dead. So, so you know, I, I said to them, every good marriage I've ever seen, the man has had a leadership role. Every good marriage I've ever seen, every happy, truly happy marriage, the man has taken a leadership role. But what does that mean? What does leadership mean? Leadership means that you are responsible for the maintenance of your people in a way that they're not responsible for you. My children didn't have to worry about where my next meal was coming from. I had to worry about where their next meal was coming from. My wife didn't have to worry about how, who was gonna, how the rent was going to get paid. I worried about that, and she had to do these things in the house. That made me, gave me a leadership role. That's what a leadership role looks like. You're responsible for things. The problem with it, of course, is that you're not going to go in and say to your kids, you know, well, you should be grateful to me, you little whippersnapper. You know, you don't say anything. You just provide. You give them the stuff. You're the leader. You just do what it is there for you to do. And there's a danger there that children will not understand that things don't just magically appear. Chris Rock used to do a wonderful, wonderful routine about how nobody ever says to dad, thank you for this light I'm reading by. It's so much easier to read when you have light, dad. You know, nobody says that. And so you just think about what you want. You know, and if you don't have what you want, you're angry. If you're not getting what you want, and you never think about where it's coming from. So listen to this video of Sarah Jong giving a speech at Harvard and complaining about Western culture. Now, just, just so you know this, Sarah Bourne was born in South Korea and moved here when she was three years old. She went to a UCB, like I did, the University of California at Berkeley, and then Harvard Law School, where she was editor of the Harvard Journal of Law and gender, whatever that is. Okay, and here she is discussing what's so, just so wrong about Western culture. Everything is implicitly organized around um, how men see the world, and and not just men, how white men see the world. Um, and this is this is a problem. This is why so many things suck. Yeah, that's. I, I want to know what sucks for Sarah. You know, I mean, first of all. What, did it suck that 30,000 30, Americans died to keep South Korea from becoming a socialist paradise like North Korea? I mean, is that what you, if, if only those 30,000 Americans, mostly white men, I was, would assume, if that's what we're going to care about, since all those guys hadn't died, she would have her socialist paradise now. She could be living under Kim Jong-un and things would be great. That would, that would just be so happy. What sucks that she went to Harvard? You know, this is the woman who tweeted uh, that, you know, what can, what can white men actually take credit for? So she's standing in Harvard, created by white men, wearing clothes designed by white men, speaking a language designed by white men, using values that came down to her through white men. I, the, the fact is, it's not that they were white. Their, their whiteness doesn't constitute their goodness, obviously. It's their ideas, the ideas that people had and fought for and died for and that came down to them and the culture that created that gave her this life. And she might have gotten up. What would it have looked like if she thought about where things came from instead of what she wants, okay, instead of the perfect life she doesn't have? What would happen if un instead of being a child who doesn't know where anything comes from, she thought about, you know, where these things that she has come from, came from, and she said, you know, hey, thanks, white men, if that's the way she wants to categorize this people. If she said thanks to this wonderful West, first of all, for saving my country and creating a country that includes me, that would let me in, that would let me say, you know, you can be part of it all. It's great. You know, Harvard, I went to Harvard. Wow. You know, thanks so much. Thank you for that. Now, now let me deserve it. Let me contribute to it. Let me become a part of it, you know, and thereby show, there, but I prove that it wasn't your whiteness that made it good. It wasn't your gender that made it good. It was the ideas. Let me become a part of those ideas and contribute to them. You know, instead, you start to want, you just talk about what you want 
these magical things that you want, and you become envious. You become envious and dissatisfied. It's true of all of life, right? I mean, it's like you're being, you know, if you if you wake up every morning and you're thrilled that God has given you another day to be here, you're going to have a much different life and a much different attitude than if you wake up every morning worrying about the things you don't have. And by the way, you should have ambitions. You should have desires. There should be things that you don't have that you want, and you go out and get them, and that's what you work for, and those give you goals. But, you know, before you start out that way, it wouldn't hurt you to, you know, wake up in the morning and say, hey, you know, thanks for the fact that I'm here yet again, another day. What a thing. You know, I mean, that those are the things that the left can't do. And why can't they do it? Well, they're dedicated to making sure that everything, you know, that we know how bad everything is and making sure we're divided, making sure they establish you know, this is a lens that you're looking through. You establish these ideas that divide us. Oh, you're black and I'm white. And and the reason they do that is be, the reason they do that is they think of everything in materialist terms. They think of everything in terms of power and who has the power. And if they got the power through racism, well, now we'll be racist and then we'll get the power. You know, and they, that's the way they think. But it's just a little bit of gratitude, a little bit of wondering about where these things come from that she's enjoying that are benefiting her, would just change her whole attitude and the attitude of the left. 